Today we're going to talk about wireless vulnerabilities in practice. Now I know we haven't covered these subjects before in the past simply because simulating wireless attacks and demonstrating how this works to be used or to be learned for educational purposes is not that easy. But today we will be able to demonstrate one of the most popular uh, wireless attacks and it's still it does exist to this day so it is about the WPS WPS stands for wireless protected setup and it is a feature that exists nearly in every or maybe in most routers used these days so it's actually a button if you locate your router you might see a WPS button that when you push it will turn on the WPS feature and when it is turned on you will be able to access the network or even the router with an eight digits pin so using that pin you will not need any wireless uh, other wireless standard like WPA or WPA2 you just need the pin okay push the button turn on the feature and connect to the network simple as that but the thing is you know wp8 is not that secure today we're going to see how practically uh, the exploitation of wps works all right before we start it's worth knowing that wps the wps pin is composed of two shared keys two psks when we want to attack wps we want to ultimately guess the wps pin because if we guess the WPS pin, we will be able to access the router and we will be able to access the wireless network. So how to do that? There is an attack called the Pixie Dust attack. In Pixie Dust attack, we work on guessing the target, which happens to be the WPS key. Now, the Pixie Dust attacks works on that by brute forcing the two pre-shared keys which are the main pillars or the main components of the WPS. If we are able to brute force the two pre-shared keys that constitute the WPS pin, ultimately we'll be able to crack or find out or learn or guess the WPS key. All right, now what are the routers that have the WPS button? Nearly most routers have this button and the, the problem is most of these routers are affected by this issue for example we have broadcom realtek ra link are among the models so how to um start you will need the most prominent wireless attack suite which is aircrack ng if you want an ultimate tool to use for all wireless attacks, use aircrack-ng. Or for the purpose of the scenario, we're going to use one shot, a Python script called one shot, can be used to attack wireless networks that use the WPS feature. Now, before we get started, make sure that if you don't need the WPS, just turn it off. Make it off, I mean, right? don't turn it on locate your router make sure that the button is not uh, pushed all right so to get started let's go to the attacker machine and scroll to the very first so the first thing we have here is the one shot which is a python script can be found in this repository one shot performs pixie dust attack without having to switch to monitor mode so monitor mode is a mode that you have to activate when you want to attack a wireless network, especially if you are using or if you're planning to use air crack. That's why air crack and G is not preferred tool for because it's of its complexity and the uh, number of requirements. So that's one shot. Okay. And here, as you can see the features, it can perform pixie dust attack integrated uh, wi-fi online generator wps generator online wps brute force so it can only be used to 
do online attacks and only offline attacks the requirements and lastly the setup so all you have to do is to follow the instructions here to set it up on your machine all right so now let's go to the affected machine okay so we are here all right so this is a machine that have wireless enabled okay now in linux basically if you execute if config you will list the available network interfaces in the case here we have three network interfaces we have wlan0 to indicate that there is a wireless network interface up and running once a machine is connected to a network through wireless in linux operating system you will see another interface up and running the name might be different might be different but in most cases it is wlan0 that's the name of the interface all right so now we have a wireless network up and running we will want to know if this wireless network has the wps feature enabled if wps is enabled we will be able to attack this network and get the pin and then get un fettered access to the wireless network so we're going to go back and in linux operating system you can use iw dev lan0 scan so iw is the tool used to interact with wireless network interfaces in linux operating systems it can also work if you are scanning a wireless network in range when we perform wireless assessment or wireless security testing we prefer to use linux operating system because it has unlimited options when it comes to the tools and frameworks that can be used so in iw here it is the main extension that can be used to interact with wireless interfaces now we have the option dev lan0 in dev lan0 we specify the network interface we want to interact with and then we choose the nature of the interaction here we choose to scan this network interface so when we opt to scan this network interface we will be able to come up with a list of information regarding the configuration, the encryption, and a plethora of other information. Alright, so once we start the scan, as you can see, the first thing that pops up is the BSS, which is the MAC address of the router. You remember that when we see WLAN 0 here in the configuration, network configuration, it, it means that this device is connected to a wireless network. A wireless network is run by a wireless device or a router. In this case, the BSS represents the MAC address of this router. And here, uh, other worth uh, noteworthy information are we have the RSN, which happens to be the version one, and it uses the CCMP cipher. And if you scroll down, you can see here information pertaining to the use of WPS. We can see it's version 1 and it is configured it's up and running which means that the router to which the device is connected has the WPS button pushed okay so it's turned on and the WPS feature is working which means now we can start att attempting to attack this feature especially that it is old version so what we do next we use one shot we go to one shot we can see here the use of this tool how it works the usage here we can see the usage so with dash i we specify the interface dash p we specify the bss id let's tune down these options so if you go here we can see we execute by we use execute one shot with python because it's a python script dash i lan zero WLAN 0. Here we specify the interface or the network interface on which the wireless uh, network is running. Dash P, we specify the MAC address of the network device. Happens to be this. Now in dash K, we specify the attack method. If you go back to the tool, now with dash K here, looks like the option, yeah, dash K here. So on dash K, 
we start the pixie dust attack basically we are attacking weak encryption protocols maybe such as WEP so chances are if the uh, network uses WEP for encryption with this method specified in the command we will be targeting this encryption algorithm now ultimately remember the aim is to guess the two pre-shared keys because if the tool is able to guess these PSKs it will able to deduct uh, sorry to to uh, deduce the WPS key right because you know WPS key is ultimately composed of these two PSKs now back to the tool okay so once we start the command as you can see at the end we come up with many uh, details here among the details we find is look at this the WPA pre-shared key this is the wireless network access or the wireless password and here we have the pin which happens to be one two three four five six seven zero now we have came up with the two most important pieces of information about a wireless network the WPS pin and the wireless password now we can connect to the wireless network using one of these two keys and you are done but if you want to take this further let's say you want to get access to the router right now if you want to get access to the router which happens to be plc router you will want to find out the administration password of the or the password of the administration panel now these two passwords will not necessarily give you access to the admin panel of the router because it is different so what we're gonna do, we're gonna need first to associate or can create a configuration file, okay, with these two passwords. So we use WPA underscore passphrase. This is a tool that can be used to create a configuration file that can be attached to a current connection. We supply the WPA passphrase with the wireless network name, which happens to be PLC router, and the passphrase. Once we do that, we redirect the output of this command to a file named config. Now this file will be used by another tool named WPS supplicant. So this is another tool that takes the configuration file as an input and the wireless network interface and it will associate your network interface with the, with the, the connection. So next, we'll be able to access the router without the need for the password. Lastly, here, as you can see, uh, because the network interface, which happens to be LAN 0, doesn't have an active IP address, we needed to assign it an IP address using the netmask tools. So here, we use ifconfig, specify the network interface, happens to be the wireless network interface in question, we give it an IP address and it mask. Now, in practical scenarios, you might not need to uh, perform this step because most wireless networks or most wireless interfaces have an IP address assigned. So what's the next thing to do? The next thing, after we associated the sensitive information, the password and the WPS pin, we associated them with a, a configuration profile and attach the configuration profile to the uh, network interface, we can then connect to the router. Now, here comes the point of argument. Here we connected to the router, right, using the root username and the IP address of the router. Usually this is the IP address for most uh, wireless networks or most wireless routers uh, associated with home networks. It is 192.168.11 right it's most popular ip address used there so we connect using ssh and as you can see here we did not need to provide a password right there was no password provided simply because uh, if you remember we have associated an active configuration profile which contains all the necessary information about the network we associated the configuration profile with the existing network interface Right, so if you, now we connect from this existing network interface to the router and we will not need a password. Now this is for SSH, but if the router doesn't have SSH 
running or turned on then you will need to if you want to access the router you will need the web interface password and that's no other story you will need to brute force the uh, password and as you can see ultimately we were able to get access to the access point so that was a simple brief demonstration of how WPS attacks work